everybody. How are you doing? Woo! Yeah, happy. That's what I like to see. Um, thanks for coming out on a rainy night, but this is a very special evening. It is, of course, the launch of Everything But The Girls. 11th album, Fuse. Woo! Shall we get it out? <laughs> um, my name's Miranda Sawyer. I'm very happy to host this uh, talk for tonight. We're, uh, Tracy and Ben will be talking for about an hour. And then that will be it. But let, but let me uh, introduce you to them. Obviously, you know who they are, but I'm just going to do my spiel before they come on. Are you ready? Okay. Fuse is Tracy and Ben's 11th album, a, 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 a career that spans over 40 years, includes eight gold, two platinum albums, as well as their immensely successful careers as solo musicians, collaborators, producer, record company, uh, runner, club owner, and of course, writers of several best selling books. They're pretty good, really. Separately, they are Tracy Thorne and Ben Watt. Together, they are everything but the girl. Here they come. Oh, have a seat. Right. And relax. Um, okay, well, it's um, lovely to see you on a stage um, in front of a rapt audience. Um, okay, I think as everybody knows here that this is uh, uh, a Fuse, is an album um, that uh, has come out, and it's the, the last one that you brought out was 24 years ago, Temperamental, I think. Um, it's already a five star album, The Fuse. It's come out, you've got amazing reviews. Um, top marks from the Guardian and the Times, which is quite hard to do. Um, do these reviews matter to you, or, or do you think it's okay, whatever? We've made an album, we don't mind. Of course it matters. <laughs> <laughs> All those artists who say they don't read their reviews, they're just lying. <laughs> I think I, it, it matters just because it's, it's a reaction, you know, and okay, so it's a public reaction, but it's still... You know, somebody who sat down with it, yes, their job is to review it, um, but you've touched them in some way and you've made an impression on them and that's really what, what you do it for, you know. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, anyone. It's just, it's, it's important, you know, I think. Yeah, and I think, you know, the thing is, it's often the first reaction you get. Um, yeah. And it's a very public reaction. Oh. Yeah, that's quite tough, really, isn't it? Yeah. First reaction I, you get, I it's think like it's, marks you know, out of ten. Yeah, it's perfectly possible to you know, cultivate in yourself a kind of detached attitude towards those things. And you have to, to a certain extent as an artist, to build up, you know, resilience that means you can carry on, you know, belief in your own work, whatever. Mm. Um, but on the other hand, you know, in the first week your record is actually publicly available, the first feedback you get is in the form of reviews. So, of course it matters. Yeah. <laughs> And also, I mean, there's a there's a sense that this is uh, this is an album that people have uh, are surprised to receive, yeah. but it's also adding to the canon of your work. You have you you have a, 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 an amazing career already, so you need to bring something out that's going to add to that, that, that those pieces of work. Yeah, and and you know, for us, that was um, you know we couldn't help but have that in the back of our mind at some of the stages along the way. Um, I think when we started the process of even talking about do we want to do some music together, um, we had to go through quite a convoluted process of going, okay, well, what do we mean? Are we actually going to try and, you know, do a kind of comeback? Are we going to make a record that can stand side by side with the last record we made and potentially, like, compete as a, you know, current pop record? And our initial response was, no, we absolutely don't want to do that. That's going to be terrifying. So let's just kind of pretend we're not doing that. Let's just talk to each other about what would it feel like to just make some music together. Yeah. Um, and maybe we can just start off in a spirit of, we don't need to tell anyone we're doing it. No one necessarily ever needs to hear it. You know, that was how we laid down the parameters. So it's, it's an idea of just taking that pressure off. Yeah, trying to. Yeah, trying to take the pressure off. <laughs> and, um, I mean, we, we didn't start... Um, I mean, there was a lot of tiptoeing around yeah. at the beginning. Um, Tracy was 
keener than I was at the beginning. Um, but I think the thing that was the big change for us was, well, it was the pandemic in many ways. I mean, we each had, you know, quite um, busy solo careers. You know, Tracy was a columnist with the New Statesman. She was writing books um, interspersed with albums. Yeah. You know, I'd been a DJ and done the record label and then I'd come back and done these solo records. Um, and we were always out of sync with each other. Um, and then the gate came down with, with lockdown and it was quite heavy for us, you know, because I was shielding because of my autoimmune condition. Um, and it went on a very long time. Friends of ours were starting to go to restaurants and cinemas and we were still stuck at home because we weren't sure what we should be doing. Um, and I think when we came out of the pandemic and things did start to get back to normal, Tracy just turned to me and she just said, are we really going to go back to what we were doing before? Or have we been changed? Mm. And I think we felt we had been changed in some way. And it had brought us together, you know. And she said, maybe this is now the time. Yeah. You know, we never said never. We just didn't really know when the right time was. And then Tracy said, well, maybe, maybe, you know, we won't get another chance. Maybe this is the moment. Yeah, I had a real sense of time passing. And again, you know, that's partly to do with getting older. And maybe, again, the pandemic was, you know, a bit of a wake-up call in that sense. It was a real moment when all of us lost a lot of agency in our own lives, a lot of power, a lot of control, a lot of ability to plan anything. We suddenly realised it can all be taken away from you at a moment's notice. And again, I had this feeling of, you know, we keep saying, oh, maybe one day we'll make a record together. But you can't say that forever. Yeah. At some point you have to go, look, that one day has got to be now. So. And also, I mean, with the sense of the, with something like COVID, if it, it does stop everything, it stopped what you were doing, so it stopped the, the two separate paths yeah. that you were on. And then you could think, okay, this is the change that, that means that we can assess it and, and go for it. Yeah. But it still doesn't mean that it's kind of naturally going to work I mean, no, it really might not you know I mean you you were a little bit more reluctant it sounds Ben I was reluctant and that's because I think I knew in the back of my mind that a lot of the burden to create the music for this new project was going to fall on, on me and I had no idea what I was going to do or what I could do or what I even wanted to do um, and you know Tracy kept pushing me and I would back away and then she'd come back from a walk and say oh forget what I said it doesn't matter <laughs> and then there'd be another day where I would say oh I've been thinking about it maybe we should you know there was a lot of that and then one night we were at the kitchen table going over it for about the umpteenth time and I just finally said oh fuck it look I've got some stuff on my phone <laughs> and I had some sketches of music that I'd done um, during lockdown um, little piano improvisations and some electronic soundscapes that I'd done really just to keep myself sort of interested during the time I was shielding. And I didn't think it was an album, they were fragments of ideas, you know, just different voicings on chords and things that interested me. But Tracy, just in a spirit of openness, just said, well look, I immediately like three or four of those. Let's start there. And that's really how the record began. And then when you make the, make an album and you're making it together and you're making it maybe it's everything but the girl, you're just not quite sure. Um, how do you know when it is everything but the girl? What's the, what's the point? I mean, there was a real turning point. I, as, as Ben says, you know, once we started at home, we were kind of still doing it in this very experimental spirit. And then we thought, okay, let, we've got three or four little pieces that are halfway, let's book a bit of studio time. And we went in with our friend Bruno Ellingham, engineer. We went to his little studio. Um, and we just spent one day, um, so we put the tracks that Ben had, you know, up on the system and started adding some lead vocals. And honestly, by the end of that day, I think we realised, I think it only took one day um, of hearing it properly on the big speakers and with, you know, a vocal recorded properly through a proper microphone. And, and we just went, oh, okay. And that, <laughs> you know, we better then, the, do it then. then the other side of us kicked in. You know, up until that point, it's the kind of, 
slightly reticent, private side of us, which was very dominant, being very, let's go easy on ourselves, let's not be too high pressured. And then I think literally in that one day, a switch flipped and the other side of us kicked in, which is, we're going to make a record, it's going to be fucking good. <laughs> so we we're going to go kind for of it. Both went, whoa, okay, the <laughs> sleeves rolled up. And then, you know, what you were saying earlier, the whole thing of, you know, your past work being, can it be a pressure that that's weighs on you heavily? I mean, up until that point, I think it had been a bit of a pressure that was weighing on us heavily. And then at that point, it almost became like a motivational, inspirational thing to think, okay, look, we've done good work. We went out on a high. We went out at a period when we were making good work. So if we're going to come back with a record, it's got to be at least as good as where we stopped. Yeah. 